Warning, there is a good chance Bitcoin Mike has no idea what he's talking about. Do your own research. Enjoy the show. Thank you. Let's take a quick look at the markets. Bitcoin coming out at 16,800. A little bit of weakness today in the markets as the stock market is pretty much taking a turn. Pretty much the same range we've been in for the last few months. But um, some of these altcoins have taken kind of a hit. You got BNB coming down at 284, XRP down to 38 cents, Cardano down to 31 cents, which is pretty much where Cardano has been for the last like four or five months. Matic still hanging out at 88 cents, and you still got Litecoin hanging out at 76 uh, 76 dollars. Litecoin is very very bullish right now. Like I said before, I wish I held more Litecoin. And let's check out our Theta. Our lovely Theta is down to 87 cents. So yeah, everything's kind of just bleh, kind of where we, where we've been for a while. But let's see what's going on news wise. Let's see what Crypto Banter is talking about today. Um, a little bit of BitBoy. We got to talk BitBoy first. That uh, you know, get that out of the way. Let's see what's going on with BitBoy. Um, this Christmas, there's, there's something, something that you have, have to buy. buy. Your, your friends, friends your, your your family, family and everybody. Uh, uh, BitBoy, BitBoy launched a book called, called Catching Up to Crypto. To crypto. <laughs> um, I mean, even <laughs> Raul Paul said uh, Catching Up to Crypto is a book that needed to be written, and there's no better person than Ben to write it. So at this point. Uh, Crypto banter ran is basically just mocking. If anybody can't see that, he's basically just mocking BitBoy at this point. He, it's just basically a big joke. And um, when when I found out about this BitBoy book, I was kind of thinking back to the '90s and all those infomercial scammers. I found a few. Anybody remember um, Don Laprie, where you saw that you placed a little cla tiny classified ads, and he he would run this infomercial all day and night. The incredible thing that I see. The second way to make money that I stumbled onto was placing tiny classified ads in the newspaper. If you create and test one tiny classified ad in the newspaper that makes just 30 to $40 profit in a week, it could make you a fortune. Well, sounds convincing, Don, but yeah, you went to jail for 10 years then then ended up killing yourself. And he also kind of reminded me of... Um, the, the natural cures guy, uh, Kevin uh, Trudeau. Let me see if I can find that one. And of course, we all remember Kevin Trudeau of his natural cures. They don't want you to know about. Remember, he peddled this natural cure crap, the weight loss cure crap for the last. He did it for like five or six years before he finally got put into jail. Folks, it takes time before the government actually files charges and puts you in jail. It always takes time. So usually between five to seven years. But, um, you know, kind of reminds me of this guy. Do you remember infomercial king Kevin Trudeau, who always seemed to find a way to make millions of dollars no matter how many people accused him of fraud? Tonight, though, the guy who wrote books like Natural Cures They Don't Want You to Know About is seeing the world through the bars of a jail cell. That's right, a federal judge in Chicago has locked him up for failing to pay a $37 million fine. Trudeau claims he's broke, but prosecutors say he's still living a high roller lifestyle. Who would have doubted it? Recently getting a $350 haircut. Right, right. So, uh, congratulations on the book, BitBoy. Um, we'll see how that goes for you. <laughs> All right, here's some more crypto banter. So, so that's, that's from Ralph Paul. So, that's, that's coming up for sale. I don't know if it's for sale yet. Um, in, in the meantime, meantime uh, BitBoy, BitBoy had to, he, he has given $10,000 to Zach XBT because he got caught taking money for, for, for token reviews. Okay. okay. And <laughs> then he wanted to give away the 15K and he said, who should I give it to? 5K to 3 years of FTX, Grinding Poet or Zach XBT, the community voted Zach XBT. Then Zach XBT tweeted and said, yeah, I can confirm that actually BitBoy sent me 10 grand. So, so, I mean, there we go. go. There's, There's a transaction. transaction. By, by the way, way, by the way, if you do want to track uh, any of Bitcoin's wallets, this, is, this would be a good place to start because that's where he sent his money to Zach XPT. So funny. Crypto Ram basically trying to – basically he made this little snippet basically just to let people know how to track Bitboy's wallets. It's so obvious this crypto banter guy is so fed up with Bitboy. He just wants to see him go away. Um, 
you got to respect you got to respect Ran a little bit the way he's so cunning and sneaky. You know, it's like he's like a he's like a slithering snake. And I don't know as much as I as much as I don't like the guy, you got to you got to give him some sort of credit for the way he can pretend he's your friend while still stabbing you in the back at the same time. Very good stuff. But anyway, good job, Rand, exposing BitBoy. All right, let's see what else is going on in the, in, uh, the world today. <clears throat> Sam Bakeman fried says he hired um, Gizillion Maxwell's lawyer. Now, this is the same lawyer who um, also defended El Chapo. And if you remember, all those, all those, those two big-name celebrities got like – one got life in jail. The other got 20 years in jail. But I guess kind of the point is this guy's a big, high-profile lawyer. And don't forget, Sam Bakeman fried was telling everybody he only has $100,000 left to his name. So they basically looked up what this guy charges, and $100,000 would pretty much last for two weeks hiring this guy. So people, you know, uh, Sam Bakeman fried was doing an interview, and somebody asked him, how are you paying for this lawyer if you only have $100,000 left? And Sam Bakeman fried said he doesn't know. So um, – Clearly, 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 Sam Bakeman Freed has more than $100,000. I'm pretty sure at this point, everything that comes out of Sam Bakeman's Freed mouth is a lie. And he gets caught in the lies every single um, every single interview. Another thing I noticed about Sam Bakeman Freed is he doesn't look anybody in the eye, and that's usually a telltale sign that people are lying. Any Anybody will tell you that. If somebody's not looking you in the eye, they're probably lying to you. And I was watching a bunch of Sam Bakeman Freed interviews, and he never looks anybody in the eye. So... Yeah, he's going to be rotten in jail for a long time in my personal opinion, but it's going to take some time. It's going to take some time. And they're also saying now that his little um, not-so-sexy not so um, CEO of Alameda Research, Caroline Ellison, she was spotted in New York City, and basically she was in Hong Kong before that. And people are saying – they're speculating, well, is she trying to work out some sort of deal with the FBI? Because apparently she was basically Sam Bakeman Freed's right hand um, little slut that you know they had that polygamy relationship, so um, she pretty much knows all his dirty little secrets. And people just think it's really weird that she's in the in the New York City right now. So she may actually be um, working with the FBI to basically they're just building evidence right now against Sam Bakeman Freed. I wouldn't be surprised if in the next month or two we see an arrest warrant issued for Sam Bakeman Freed. But it – I mean it is all speculation right now. Maybe she's just in New York City visiting people. But it's kind of weird. She went to Hong Kong, and then she immediately left Hong Kong and came back to the United States. So it's pretty – it is pretty prob probable that she's working with the FBI right now. But it's all speculation at this point. And everybody's getting on um, Kevin O'Leary right now. Um, you know, they're, everybody's so mad at Kevin O'Leary. Like, you know, Kevin O'Leary put like – Hundreds of millions of dollars in FTX. He was a big supporter of Sam Bakeman Freed. He looked like a total idiot when Sam Bakeman Freed rug pulled everybody. And um, people are so mad that Kevin O'Leary is not railing against um, Sam Bakeman Freed. So here's a little bit of it right here, but I think it all makes sense. I don't know. I'm not joining the herd. I'm, I'm just, just waiting for the facts. That's, that's what, what I'm doing. doing. Ken, thank you so much for being here. I wanted to get to something that I think a lot of people have been wondering about and maybe even taken a bit aback by. After that interview at Dealbook last week, you reposted a tweet from Bill Ackman essentially agreeing that you believe SBF when he says, when he says that he didn't knowingly commit any wrongdoing. I guess I wonder what has you still coming to his defense when you've lost millions of dollars on this investment and when so many people have lost money here? Because I am of the group of people that says you're innocent until proven guilty. That's what I believe. And I want the facts. And so if you tell me that you did not you did or didn't do something, I'm going to believe you until I find out it's a falsehood. What we have now is everybody on earth raging against this guy, Sam Bankman Fraid, saying he's a fraudster, he stole the money, he took it to his own account, he's hidden somewhere. How does anybody know that if we have no way to audit it? How can anybody make that claim? Are they not as baseless as what Sam Bankman Free to say until we have the facts? That's all I'm saying, and I think Ackman's in the same camp. I want the facts. That's all. I don't think that's to asking too much. And frankly, I can't retrieve my money until I know where it is. And that's the first thing I need to know. I need to know where was my money transferred to. It's alleged it went to the Bahamian government, alleged it went to the U.S., alleged it was stolen in a hack. 
I don't know any of that yet, and I want to know where it is because I've told all of my lawyers, keep your phasers on stun until we have facts. Then we're going to get that money back. That's exactly what's going to happen. I'm not the only institution in this situation. We all want our recovery path. We need a recovery path, but we don't have one. Kevin, yeah, there is a lot still to be explored here, but what would you say to the people who are not seeing their money right now, the people? Yeah, so a lot of people are coming down on Kevin O'Leary saying, oh my God, he should be calling for Sam Bakeman frieds arrest. He should be basically saying he's a scammer. But there's one of two ways that, that Kevin O'Leary is playing this. I think what he's doing is he's trying to play nice with Sam Bakeman fried He's trying to be cordial because he sees a path possibly of getting his money back. Or he wants to basically just not say anything derogatory until this whole thing gets investigated, which might not be until months. Remember, uh, Kevin O'Leary was a paid spokesman for FTX. So it does look kind of weird if you're a paid spokesman and you have so much money invested in Sam Bakeman Freed. If you just come out calling him a scammer, it also makes you look bad as well. So I think we will see Kevin O'Leary eventually coming out and saying he's a scammer. But I think right now, <laughs> Kevin O'Leary may – it also may be that he's just holding out hope that um, maybe Sam Bakeman Freed was just in over his head and um, he didn't know what he was doing and there was no criminality. But you also have to remember – you know, we have the um, – I looked. I was looking this up – the five stages of grief. Now, you have to remember Kevin O'Leary put hundreds of millions of dollars into this FTX. It ruined his reputation. It really did ruin his reputation, and he looks like an idiot. So right now, it looks like Kevin O'Leary is in the denial anger stage of the five stages of grief, which would make sense if you were that close. He was also friends with Sam Bankman fried Like they had personal lunches and calls and um, – it could have gotten a lot worse for um, Kevin O'Leary because he was thinking of doing all sorts of other funds with FTX that would have had other people lose their money as well. So right now, Kevin O'Leary is playing it cool, which is fine, but I do also believe he's in the denial anger stage. I think eventually you're going to see him bargaining, which you're starting to see a little bit right now where he's probably going to say, okay, he'll probably, you'll probably see Kevin O'Leary do interviews saying, well, if I can just get a portion of my money back, we can – you know, I've had bad deals in the past, and if I can get a portion back, it won't be that much of a loss – then you'll basically see him in, in the depression phase where you don't see him for a while, and then he'll just accept it, and he'll start calling Sam Bickman Freed um, a criminal and basically rooting for his uh, demise and going to jail. But I think that's where we're at right now. And you, I mean, you have to understand, Kevin O'Leary isn't like you or me who may have lost a couple thousand dollars in FTX. He lost hundreds of millions, and he was also a paid spokesman, and he was also friends with him. And he also had met Sam Bickman Freed's mother and father, and he was kind of close with them. So he just doesn't want to come out right now. Um, and say that they're a scammer. It's almost like if your best friend gets caught doing something and you've known this guy for a long time and you just can't believe that he would do something so bad, so you're kind of sticking up for him or you're basically saying, like, you know what, let's, let's see where the facts lay because it's hard for me to believe. So people, I think people need to just get off this Kevin O'Leary. Um, also, and you because know, you also have BitBoy saying, oh, Kevin O'Leary won't come out and say – um, you know, Sam Bakeman free to scammer. That must be mean Kevin O'Leary is in on the scam. That's the stupidest thing I ever heard in my in my life. So if my friend gets caught robbing a bank and I've known him for ten years and it was like, I can't believe it. If I don't come out and say, oh my, if I don't come out and say my friend should be thrown in jail, versus I just say, oh my friend, I don't know. Let's wait till all the facts come out. That means I was. That means I'm a criminal too. No, he was close with this guy. So I think eventually you will see Kevin O'Leary coming out and saying. Sam Beckman free is a giant fraud. But right now, I think, one, you have the five stages of grief. And two, I think he's just trying to play it cool because he really wants to find out if he can get his money back. And I do think that Kevin O'Leary is still holding out hope that he can get some of his money back when most likely he can't. But when you lost hundreds of millions of dollars, you like to have hope. And I think that's what Kevin O'Leary is holding on to right now, in the denial anger stage. Remember, we're only a few weeks into this whole FTX debacle. It's relatively new. Sam Bakeman fried hasn't even been charged yet. Not, I mean, we're, it just happened. It just happened. So that's my take on that. Um, little Cardano news. Got to do the Cardano news. Cardano received stunning prediction for, two, for 2023. Here's how tables would turn. Cardano-focused Twitter account ADA Whale has taken to Twitter to make a stunning prediction for Cardano in the year 2023. The Cardano network is moving into the next era, the age of Voltaire, which ushers in governance and decentralization decision-making. 
Here's a Twitter post. 2023 is going to be the year of governance for Cardano. That's interesting because in 2020 20, through 2022, we were most likely paying catch up to other DeFi chains. Therefore, by definition, letting them set the narrative and dancing to their tune. According to ADA Well, 2023 would be the year of governance for Cardano, which makes this interesting on how the tables would turn. He know that, that in the last couple of years, Cardano has been playing catch up. The year 2023 is set to be an eventful one for Cardano as it will launch, we'll see the launch of the DeFi DGED stablecoin, Cardano's algorithmic, algorithmic, algorithmic stablecoin developed in collaboration with the Cody network. Cody is another good coin. I actually hold a little bit of Cody. I haven't talked about it in a while. So remember, we have that we have the Cardano stablecoin coming out this year, and Cardano is basically the last couple of years. Cardano was basically paying catch up with these other chains. Didn't have much DeFi. Didn't have much going on. Basically, waiting for all these upgrades. The upgrades have come. So DeFi has come to Cardano, and you have a stablecoin coming out. Um, I think in the next couple months or next year. So I think next year is going to be crazy for Cardano. I'm thinking mid 2023, we're really going to see Cardano. Um, absolutely do very very well and like i've been saying for a long time cardano hit a high of three dollars the last bull market i'm expecting between five and ten dollars for this one and um we'll see and that would be 2024 but we'll see what happens folks but i'm very very bullish on cardano all right folks that's pretty much it market at 16,830. like i said we're seeing a little bit of weakness today but hey look this is the same range we've been in for a while Bitcoin is basically just following the stock market right now. All right, like and subscribe. Thank you for all the new subscribers. Talk